bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everyone. David Aragona and Craig Mulkowski here taking a look at one of two graded stakes being run on Saturday at Woodbine. This one's going as race seven. It is the grade three Maple Leaf Stakes for the Phillies and Mares going a mile and a quarter on the Tapita racetrack. So a real test of stamina for these runners. And Craig, as is often the case in these Woodbine graded stakes events, we're pitting the local horses against the shippers. And often we would give the shippers from North America the edge in these races, or I should say from the United States, uh, the edge in these races all would find is in North America. But um, uh, the Canadian horses seem to stack up pretty well against those coming in from the U.S. in this spot. It looks like a pretty evenly match, uh, matched race looking at the speed figures from Timeform U.S. I think what keeps the ca Canadian locals more interesting is that it is on the synthetic. Most of the races we talk about are run on the grass, and the shippers coming in have been running on the grass. And though I know some like to have the opinion that turf form automatically transfers to synthetic, I'm not really of that camp. Let's throw up the field for this grade three Maple Leaf Stakes. We have 11 runners signed on and it seems pretty wide open heading in here, Craig. I believe the lukewarm favorite is one of those shippers, the number 11 transient who's drawn all the way on the outside. She is one of these runners, though, that's done her better running recently on turf. And we do have a lot of surface switches in this race. Horses that last ran on turf or sometimes have run their better races on turf. They'll be trying to transfer that form to the tapita surface. And sometimes it's easier said than done. Yeah, no doubt. That's kind of what I was alluding to. And it, it's an interesting race. One I wouldn't have wanted to have made the morning line for. The top three choices are all horses who are shipping in. Only one of them ran on a synthetic last time. And that was not at Woodbine. It was at Presque Isle. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. And with the mile and a quarter distance, I think these jockeys are going to want to go at maybe a moderate clip on the front end. I'll be interested to see if it actually does develop into a fast pace, Craig, though I do agree with the pace projector that the number seven, Angelou, is likely to go forward to the lead. She's used that running style to effect to a positive effect in the past. She's won a couple of stakes races, or I should say races over the tapita surface in front running fashion. But there are others in here that could be somewhat forward. I tend to agree with you. I don't think the pace is going to be all that fast going a mile and a quarter. We very rarely see that outside of something like the Breeders' Cup Classic, what we saw last week, particularly on the Tapeta. I agree Angelou should be in the lead in this race. Some others, it gets a little bit murky in behind who might do the, uh, the pressing, but I think she will be the comfortable leader and just a matter of how much she can slow it down. Let's talk about some of the horses that are shipping into Woodbine from the U.S. And we'll begin with that morning line favorite, the number 11 transient. We'll take a look at her victory last time out at Belmont at the Big A. Uh, this was a race, Craig, where I thought that she got a very good trip, just saving ground on the rail most of the way, was able to get off it in the stretch, and she's able to win here. But she's going to have to transfer this form back over to a synthetic track, something that she's tried at Woodbine in the past, hasn't run as well there as she has in her recent turf races. Yeah, I wonder if she's not a little better on turf. I mean, she ran okay in her two synthetic tries, but clearly her best races have come on grass. We can see the two most re most recent wins have come on the grass. So for me, I'm not sure that's a proposition that I want to take on a horse who's going to be one of the favorites. Yeah, Safi Joseph, he has done pretty well with horses going from uh, turf to synthetic, at least recently. That's a move that uh, he's been able to make quite a few times at Gulfstream with they, them having the synthetic course there now. So maybe Transient's going to be able to do it. She is coming into this race in excellent form, just has to deal with that outside post position. Another runner that is coming in from the U.S. and actually the same racetrack, Aqueduct, is Creative Cairo, who is a Christophe Clement runner who will be shipping up north to Woodbine for this Maple Leaf. Let's take a look at her last race when she was second uh, in a mile and an eighth event at Aqueduct. And Craig, this race was just kind of a merry-go-round affair. The winner led the entire way. Creative Cairo was second the entire way, never really making up any ground. She is one, though, that you don't really have to worry about the distance for. 
I think that's the upside on her is the distance. Maybe the races are a little quick at those shorter distances. She does have the question of synthetic as well as she's never run on it, but she comes in in pretty good form and her speed figures stack up well. And Christoph Coman does fine with chippers, particularly in the woodbine. He usually gets bet pretty heavily though. Christoph does do well with shippers to Woodbine, though his numbers with horses going from turf to synthetic are not so strong. I looked up some of the stats in Formulator. His ROI with that move and a sample of nearly 40 runners is hovering just above a dollar on a $2 wager. So not something he does uh, with a great amount of success. We'll see if Creative Cairo can take a step forward switching to the synthetic surface. Another horse who is shipping into Woodbine for this race is the number three, Charges Dropped. And Craig, she's been in pretty good form recently for trainer Michael McCarthy, shipping into a few different circuits. Uh, she was at California in the big middle of the summer. She went up north to Northern California to win, to finish second at Golden Gate. And then last time went east to Presque Isle, where she was able to get the victory and showing that she could handle the synthetic course there. I think that's the upside that win on the synthetic. She did it easily. I do question the distance a little bit for her. She's been more of a miler type, maybe a mile and a 16th. And I also wonder about those turf races in California. It's something we've talked about often. They're not quite as strong as a lot of the races we talk about on the East Coast. But I would say the same even applies for Woodbine. It, it's probably a little bit stronger. So while she did handle the, the synthetic, this is a pretty big race in class. Yeah, her prior attempts going distances around a mile and a quarter haven't gone so well, but those were stakes races, mostly graded stakes races in California. One of them was an off-the-turf affair, so maybe she hasn't had her best chance to show she can get this longer distance in her prior attempts at it. She does seem like a major contender just off her recent form. Those three 110 time formula speed figures in a row, they're among the best numbers in this race, and she's uh, been able to hold that form for her entire four-year-old campaign. Let's transfer over to some of the locally based Woodbine runners, beginning with one of the Kevin Attard trainees, the number six money for Roe. And let's take a look at her race going three back when she finished uh, third, just narrowly beaten out of second in the grade two dance smartly. And Craig, she's been pretty, keeping some pretty good company recently on the turf. This was a much better race than, than the one we have today, in my opinion, from a class standpoint. It was just a better quality field. You can see it in the time form U.S. race ratings that it, it was several points higher than the race we're looking at today. And it's kind of interesting to me that one of her best efforts recently came in that race three back on the turf. But I personally think she's a better horse on the synthetic. When you scroll a little further back in the PPs, you can see five back. She had that nice win when she was still just a three-year-old. She's been on the turf because, frankly, that's where the better races are at Woodbine. And I kind of like to move back to the synthetic. Yeah, it does seem like she's been able to transfer her form between surfaces in the past, so I agree with you on that point. I guess some might say maybe her form is tailing off a little bit based on the way she ran last time, but she was 50-1 to 1 in that race. She really didn't have any business being in the EP Taylor. She was never going to be competitive with horses like Rougier and Moira, so she's getting real class relief as she drops into this Maple Leaf, and she does seem like a legitimate player in this race. Craig, I think you can also make a case for the other Kevin Attar trained runner, the number seven, Angelou. She's the one that we were talking about with regard to the pace projector. And I would think that she's going to be sent out to the front end tactics she used to win an optional claiming race on the Tapita surface two back. And she's actually ran longer than this before. As you can see, four back, it was on the turf. But I thought she ran well that day at a mile and a three ace. And I really wanted to make her my pick when I was first doing the race, just looking at those synthetic races, knowing she's going to have a pretty easy lead if things go right at the start. But I just couldn't bring myself to put her on top because, frankly, she doesn't have the speed figures to match. And I think she would have to get away with really slow fractions and be able to finish it off uh, in in this spot. Yeah, that is the knock on her. Her speed figures are a little bit light for this field, but not that light because it's not like anybody in this race is running that fast coming in here. I think uh, those 110 time formula speed figures for charges dropped were some of the best that we've seen in this field. And Angelou, she does seem like she might still have some upside in just her eighth career start. And if we're going to give money for Roe the excuse for facing tougher company last time, she certainly did, but she was also in that Canadian. So she's another one that might be getting back into a better spot as she switches over to the Tapita surface here. 
Another horse that drew an outside post position in this race is the number 10 Silent Causeway. And she's kind of a tough read, Craig, because early in the year, it seemed like she was going off form a little bit, but she got back on track over the summer. And we'll take a look at one of her recent races. This is two back at Woodbine, actually on the turf, when she was a narrowly beaten second in an optional claiming race. But then her form kind of went back the other way last time when she stepped up into the Ontario Matron. Yeah, that, that last race scares me a little bit. I watched it a few times trying to look for an excuse. Couldn't really find anything, which is why we're showing the replay we are. She ran fine that day. Uh, she um, was just able to not get up over Saratoga Vision, a horse she had handled on the synthetic. But that last race just gives me a lot of pause. Yeah, she just seems like one of these in and out types that will come into form and hold it for a few races and then go the wrong way. And I wonder if she's kind of on the, the downswing here. So we'll see what we get from the number 10 silent causeway. And there's another horse in this race at a bigger price, Craig, that I want to discuss briefly. That's the number one, Crystal Glacier. She actually ran in this race last year and was a finishing fifth in the Maple Leaf. That was her final start of 2021. Going back to watch that race, I thought she got somewhat of a tentative ride. Like her jockey just gave up a little bit too soon on the far turn as her Mark Cassie trained stablemate Skygaze wired the field on the front end and Crystal Glacier was kind of pushed down to the rail in the stretch. She's come back so far with two starts during her five-year-old campaign and on the surface of things, she ran poorly both times, Craig, but I can make some excuses for her because she made this big, wide, premature move two back when she came off the layoff in the trillium. You can see it in the running line. She was last early, made this big four wide move up to fourth on the far turn before fading. And then last time, that was just a race where there was no closing going on from the back of the pack. You can see those slow blue color coded pace figures for the first couple of fractions. She never really had a chance to close. She's also one of these horses that has proven to be better on this in than she is on the turf. She's really never had much success on turf. So I just thought at a price, Craig, she was a little bit interesting. And for a trainer like Mark Cassie, usually has multiple starters in races like this at Woodbine, Granted Stakes, I found it interesting that she was the only Mark Cassie runner in this field. And she certainly had races last year. As you mentioned, she ran in this race, and I think it is a better than looked effort. Um, a little bit iffy on the pace side. I wonder where if she's going to be as far back as we show her in the pace projector. If she's going to run well, I wouldn't want to see her back that far when the race actually unfolds. I think she'd have to be closer up like she was last year. So interesting. Uh, I think the form is cloudy a little bit. We see two backs. She was beaten by Lady Spite Spear, a, a uh, horse who came back to run third in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. So that race was certainly better than it probably appears. Well, let's throw up our picks for this grade three Maple Leaf. And Craig, I don't blame you for the direction that you went, the number six money for Roe. I just think she makes a whole lot of sense in here getting that class relief and moving back over to the Tapita course. Yeah, I think she's a little better. I was looking for a price in a race like this where it's a little bit tougher. Not quite the price you looked at, a much bigger price than mine. But I would take six to one on money for Roe. I, I think it's very fair. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how they bet this race. I ultimately downgraded horses like Transient and Creative Cairo if they are indeed as short prices as they are in the morning line. I just didn't feel like they had any real edge over this field coming up to Woodbine from the United States. And I wanted to go for a bigger price. I already made my case for Crystal Glacier. Just feel like if she's around that 15 to 1 morning line, that's fair value in a race where I feel like it's so wide open and she does have those back races, as you noted, that would make her competitive here. Just feels like she's dirtied up coming in here and now she's third off the layoff for a barn that we know can win these races mark cassie so crystal glacier for me money for roe for craig in the grade three maple leaf stakes on saturday at woodbine good luck if you're playing the races this weekend